I would like to ask uh, the second uh, participant of uh, our panel, Susanna Bartoshova, uh, to hold her lecture. Uh, she has worked as a research, uh, researcher at the Institute of Art History at Research Center of Slovak Academy of Sciences in Bratislava. Uh, she focuses in local art history from the early 20th century up to the present, putting emphasis on the political context. Between 1990 and 1992, she worked as a director of the Slovak National Gallery. She was the founding uh, president of uh, Slovak section of uh, ICA from 1993 to 2000 and lectured at the University of Trnava. Uh, she is an author and editor of a number of art uh, specialized publications and curated many uh, significant exhibitions in Slovakia and ab abroad. So we're looking forward to hear your lecture. Thank you uh, for the introduction of Dr. Zuzana Bartosova. Uh, my name is Angelika Herucova, and I have been delegated the privilege uh, of reading the paper of Dr. Bartoshova since her primary uh, secondary language is French. So, like this. Uh, please, therefore, consider all the, all the eyes in the paper to be hers. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, with the hope that I won't butcher all the names uh, in the paper, uh, let me begin uh, with the technical note that uh, the reproductions in the presentations are illustra illustrative uh, of the works of the artists uh, that will be mentioned uh, and not the specific works that were exhibited. Uh, so, first, I'm sorry. First, uh, I will try to outline the situation in which the artists in Czechoslovakia lived and worked in the period referred to as normalization by the ruling communist. Uh, on August 21st, 1968, the political liberalization of the 60s ended with the invasion of uh, Czechoslovakia by Warsaw Pact Army. In culture and art, however, the liberal atmosphere survived another four years. The artists enjoyed the freedom of expression and participated in official exhibitions at home and abroad. Yet the major events, such as spectacular feasts of uh, Alex Mlinarčík and Jana Želipska, or more intimate events of Peter Bartosz and Julius Koller, were organized by action and conceptual artists themselves without the assistance of official institutions. The relations with Hungarian colleagues, too, stayed untouched by the invasion. As a gesture of reconciliation, Laszlo Becke, a friend of Tomasz Strauss, invited Slovak artists to take part in the meeting of Hungarian, Slovak and Czech, more specifically Moravian uh, artists and art critics, which took place at the summer studio of uh, Gürt Galantai, uh, founder of Art Pool in Balaton Boglar on 26th and 27th August 1972. Towards the end of 1972, the normalization, quote unquote, uh, converse, conven, pardon, conventions of art associations took place. Before mentioning the consequences of the Czech and Slovak art community, I need to clarify my interpretation of the term quote-unquote normalization. Coined by communist ideologists, the term was perfidious name for restricting civil rights and freedoms, including the freedom of artistic expression in the 1970s and 1980s. Today, it is used by, by historians, soci sociologists, political scientists, and art historians without giving it a second thought. Tell you the truth, I have a problem with that. Placing the scare quotes around the term or using it with the adjective so-called, I want to point out the fact that it, it is the exact opposite of the normal. I have always felt this way, however, for the sake of com completeness of our discussion, Allow me to back up my opinion with the words of my personal friend, Václav Havel, who said, uh, I quote, ideology, it is a word of appearances trying to pass for reality. This is why life is the system, in the system, is thoroughly permeated by hypocrisy and lies. End of quote. I also have a problem with the automatic use of the term, quote unquote, normalization, 
in a broader geopolitical context of former socialist countries. The thing is that in each country this term refers to different period. As I used to explain to my students, it is always necessary to find a fixed point, uh, an intersection of a specific time and place to name the events correctly. In Czechoslovakia, the so-called normalization characterized the period of the 1970s. In Poland at the time, however, there were no ideological restrictions related to book, books or exhibitions. Hungarian cinemas were playing movies which were banned in Czechoslovakia. To stay in touch with current art tendencies, we visited exhibitions in Krakow, Warsaw, Budapest, and Pech. In my opinion and experience, the word normalization is not appropriate to describe the cultural situation of the period under review in Poland or Hungary, although some colleagues do, do, you, do not see this as a problem today. And now back to the subject of my paper. After the so-called normalization conventions of the associations of visual art artists, the situation in Czechoslovakia radically changed. In Bohemia, the Congress took place in the autumn of 1972 and in Slovakia towards the end of the year. By 1972, the period of cultural inertia, as I call the period following the 1968 invasion, was over. All the artists who refused uh, to adapt their work to the re revival of socialist realism required by the ideologists were excluded from the association, losing the opportunity to participate in the official cultural life and present their work in public. Their works were ignored by both the official institutions and the media. Yet they managed to establish an alternative space of understanding, which I refer to as the unofficial art scene. By organizing private exhibitions in flats and studios, they confirmed their status as an artist. Without the possibility to show their works abroad, their names would fall into oblivion. Among the cultural exhibitions, in terms of the resonance of Slovak artists in the unofficial art scene, in a broader art context, are, in my opinion, those organized by Sandor Pincehei at the Municipal Gallery in Pech. The concept of these exhibitions did not reflect the world divided by politics. Pincehei uh, focused on, on graphics and drawings which allowed the artist of the unofficial art scene to escape the attention of censors by sending their works as letters and thus participate in international exhibitions alongside world famous artists. I will start my overview with the 1960, I'm sorry, 1976 exhibition, Modern Graphic Art. Czechoslovakia was represented by a Slovak sculptor, Jozef Jankovic, who displayed his works alongside 20 Hungarian artists, such as Imre Bak, Tibor Gajor, Ilona Keresu, I'm sorry, Kesheru, Dora Maurer, Andraž Mendian, Istvan Nadler, Andre Todt, or Sandor Pincehei himself. Among the world famous artists participating in the exhibition were Christo, Fred Forrest, Robert Indiana, Leslie Vine, Marcello Morandini, Anne and Patrick Poirier, Sigmar Polke, Richard, Richard Smith, Sy Twombly, and Victor Vazarelli. The 1980s International Biennale Rights drawing organized by Sandor Pincehei represented works by Slovak artist Peter Bartosz, Juraj Bar Bartus, Lubomir Djurček, Rudolf Fila, Jozef Jankovic, Michal Kern, Juraj Melíš, Rudolf Sikora and Desider Todt, European artists such as Giulio Alviani, Jan Berdyshak, Jon Bitsan, Mario Merz, François Murele, Josef Rabakovsky, Miroslav Šutej, and Peter Weibel. 
Czech artist Lumir, Lumir Hladík, Dalibor Chatrný, Jeha Kocman, Pavel Rudolf and Jiří Valoch. As for the 40 representatives of the hosting country, I hope our Hungarian colleagues will forgive me for mentioning just the most famous ones, such as Gabor Atalaj, Akos Birkas, Miklos Erdej, Djurd Galantai, Tibor Gajor, and Dora Maurer. The list of participating artists clearly shows that the exhibitions presented notably the works by the representatives of pop art, calligraphy, neoconstruct neoconstructivism, op art installation, including site-specific environmental installation, sociological art, art povera, conceptual art, and emerging video art. Although living behind the Iron Curtain, the artists apply the language of current art tendencies in their non-commissioned art, which makes them part of the international map of visual art. I must admit that apart from the aforementioned artists, I do not dare to analyze the contribution of other participating artists from the hosting country. I am fully aware of how difficult it was to establish contracts with the greatest artists from the other side of the Iron Curtain. I have discussed with this issue with Shandor Pinsehei, who approached the artist writing them letters. He got the addresses through his friends, Dora Maurer and Laszlo Becke, or from the catalogues of international graphic ex exhibitions in which he had participated since the early 1970s. The works by the artists who responded to his invitation created the essence of the international sections of page exhibitions. The artists were sending their prints and drawings as ordinary letters without any insurance. Shandor Pinzahei also asked them to donate these works to the municipal gallery to avoid any costs relating to the return of works, and most artists really did. It would be very interesting to deal with, the com deal with and compare the works of all artists participating in page exhibitions. But since we are pub pushed for time, it is impossible. Instead, I will try to outline the work of Slovak and Czech conceptual artists and compare their works with those of their hu Hungarian counterparts. I choose conceptual artists because they form a largest group of, I'm sorry, because they form the largest group of participants. Moreover, Peter Bartosz, Rudolf Sikora, Jiří H. Kocman and Jiří Valoch had also taken part in the meeting in Balaton Boglar with Djurj Galantai. In general, conceptual art does not respond to political problems, which was not true in the socialist countries of Central Europe in the 1970s, as shows the work of Gabor Atalay, uh, Miklos Erdei, and Sándor Pinsehei, Andre Todt, Lubomir, Lubomir Djurček, or Juraj Melis. While the Hungarian artist had the courage to ironize communist symbols and task the ideology directly, the aforementioned Slovak artist opposed it more or less in allegories and metaphors. Yet their works were much bolder than the statements of other Czech and Slovak conceptual artists participating in pages, page exhibitions focusing on imaginary messages of their work. Even this brief insight into the poetics of participating artists reveals the difference in the cultural situation in Czechoslovakia and Hungary. The artists from former socialist countries submitted their works to page exhibitions with a desire to become a part of an international art context. On the part of Czechoslovak artists, it took a certain amount of courage as they were not allowed to show their work in public. Without personal contacts and friendships, it would be hardly possible to withstand the political pressure under which the artists of the time had to live. The opportunity to present their work abroad developed their self-confidence. Taking part in international exhibitions alongside other Euro-American artists, the artists assessed their status, which the communists were trying to deprive them of. Shandor Pinsahei undertook this mission, although at the time he was already a repu reputable action and conceptual artist. 
Dear colleagues and friends, please take my presentation as inspiration for our further joint comparative research in which the uniqueness of the art scene of each former socialist country can stand out. I am glad that the Resonances project has this goal. No one else is going to do it for us. It is up to us, art historians and art critics of former socialist countries, to in integrate and the results of our joint work into the glo global art history. Please not in a po post-colonial manner. Those of us who have never abandoned the right to think and act freely have always rejected any colonization or ideologization. Thank you very much. <laughs>